Jian is a beast. He is one of the best, if not the best DPS in the game who excels not only in single target, but also in AOE situations. In this video, I will cover everything you need to know about him, which includes his kit, resonance chain, best weapons, echoes, teams, rotations, and more. Jian's kit is really simple. After using his resonance skill, he dashes forward and deals a good amount of damage. This can be casted in mid-air. You can think of it like Shi Yao's elemental skill. He really leaves up to his name of college Shi Yao. In his resonance liberation, he enters King Gloom mode for 10 seconds. In this mode, he gets really high resistance to interruption and all his basic attacks are replaced with a special heavy attack called Lance of King Gloom. It has a cost for 125 energy and a cooldown of 16 seconds. The burst mode lasts for 10 seconds. That is, you will face a downtime of 6 seconds, which is not really a problem as you will be switching to your supports during this time. He gets this cool dragon animations on his attacks in his burst state. Speaking of animations, Jian actually has two burst animations. This is due to his forte circuit. Jian can have up to 60 resolve stacks, which is accumulated when his normal attacks hit. His intro skill instantly gives him 30 resolve stacks, which is really helpful for his rotation. If you cast his resonance skill while his 4-day circuit is half filled, he will consume all the 4-day circuit stacks and the skill will deal 20% increased damage. However, we won't be doing this in most of the scenarios and you will know why in a bit. If you cast Jian's resonance liberation while he has 30 or more resolve stacks, that is when his 4-day circuit is half filled. Jian will consume those stacks and will deal additional damage which has a really high multiplier. This method triggers his second burst animation. While casting his resonance skill during his resonance liberation state, his skill will always be enhanced and won't consume any resolve stacks. So prioritize using the burst to consume the resolve stacks and then use his skill in his liberation state. More about his rotation and combos later. His intro skill deals some damage and as I said earlier, it gives him 30 resolve stacks. And his outro skill, if the next character you switch into while Jian's concerto energy bar is filled, Jian will do coordinated attacks along with the heavy attacks of that character. This has a good multiplier and lasts for 8 seconds. This can be triggered only up to 2 times. His first inherent skill grants him 10% attack increase after casting his intro skill. And the second inherent skill basically gives him 12% crit damage increase for 8 seconds when Jian hits an enemy, which is basically permanent. Moving on to his talent priority, Jian has separate damage multipliers which are tied to his Resonance Liberation. It makes up for most of his personal damage. So the Resonance Liberation takes the top priority, followed by his 4-day circuit, followed by his Resonance skill. You can level his basic attacks, but later on, with enough energy regen you can have 100% uptime on his Resonance Liberation and won't be using his basic attacks most of the time, unless in the Outer World. Leveling his basic attack isn't a completely bad investment for early or mid game. But yeah, it does get wasted during the late game when you have good echoes. So I am not leveling his basic attacks. His intro skill can also be leveled if you want to maximize his DPS, but it is not needed as well. So first max the liberation, then the 4 day circuit. Skill is good damage, but has the least priority when compared to the liberation and 4 day circuit. Basic attacks and intro can be skipped. Most of his damage comes during the window of his resonance liberation, so most of his on-field time would be during his liberation state. So it is crucial to have 100% uptime on his resonance liberation, which means you need to build some energy region on him. Generally speaking, try to get around 130 to 140% energy region. This amount can be reduced by using someone like Yang Yang, who provides energy restoration. Moving on to his echoes, Jian's best echo set is the five-piece arrow set, Sierra Gale set. However, it is really difficult to get good pieces from a single set. Five-piece lingering tunes or two-piece arrow set with two-piece lingering tunes isn't a bad option and are not far behind. So if you don't have good Sierra Gale pieces, these two options could be better, given that they have better stats. For your echo skill, the Felion Beringle will be the best choice as it can deal nice damage and additionally gives 12% arrow damage and 12% heavy attack damage bonus, which is great as Jian's damage in liberation state is considered as heavy attack damage. However, this monkey is quite chonky and slow. The buff is activated only when the monkey completes his second hit, so it is important to land the second hit. So what you can do is swap cancel it. 
However, buffs from characters like Mortify will end if you switch the character out. So you can first use the Echo skill, then swap cancel it by switching to Mortify to trigger his outrow. I will cover this in detail in the rotation section. The Mech Abomination is a decent alternative if you are using the Lingering Tune set or using its mixture. Also, it is much easier to use as it has no animation time unlike the Monkey, so both the Saragale and Lingering Tunes are good. So prioritize using the set with better substats. Your best Echo pattern should be a 4 cost Echo, 2 3 cost Echoes, and 2 1 cost Echo. On 4 cost Echo, you want either Crit Rate or Damage. I would prefer a crit rate echo here as getting crit rate in this game is quite difficult unless you have a crit rate weapon, and we can get a lot of crit damage. On 3 cost echoes, go for arrow damage bonus. Honestly speaking, getting an elemental damage bonus piece from set you want feels much harder than getting an early 5 star. And using an arrow damage bonus and attack piece of 3 cost echo isn't far behind double arrow pieces. With his signature weapon, Burden Summit that gives a good amount of damage bonus, Arrow plus attack set gives similar damage output, so just use the pieces that have better substats. If you have no arrow damage pieces, double attack is also viable. Energy region on one of your three cost echoes is also viable to meet Gian's energy requirements if you have no energy region rolls from your substats. And on one cost echoes, go for attack percent. So the ideal echo set will be crit on the four cost, double arrow damage, or one arrow and one attack on the three cost, and attack on one cost. For substats, look for energy region until required then go for crit stats, then attack percent and heavy attack damage bonus or flat attack. Moving on to his weapons. The best weapon for Gian is obviously his signature weapon, Burden Summit. It provides a huge amount of crit damage and additionally provides a lot of damage bonuses on which Gian can have 100% uptime. It is his best weapon by a huge margin. The 5 star standard weapon, Lustrous Razor is also a great weapon option to use on him as it provides a lot of attack percent and energy region. The Resonance Liberation damage bonus is wasted on him, but this weapon is a good stat stick. Aside from these, the BP weapon, Autumn Trace is a good weapon option. His best free to play weapon is the craftable one, Broadblade 41. It provides a good amount of energy region, letting you build offensive stats from your echoes and provides a good amount of attack. This can be easily taken to its max refinement, but you need to have over 80% HP so it can get inconsistent. The Helios Cleaver is a decent stat stick. Aside from these, for 3 stars you can use the R5 Guardian Broadblade or the R5 Broadblade of Night. Now let's move on to Gian's best team comps and team synergies. The best teammate for our Arrow Dragon Daddy is the Fusion Dragon Daddy. Mortify provides a huge 38% heavy attack damage deepen for 14 seconds after casting his outrow and also has good personal damage. I have made a detailed guide on Mortify. You can check it out after this video. After that we have Verena who can heal and provide her team-wide buffs from her outrow, passive, and the rejuvenating glow set. Don't worry if you don't have these characters. We have other alternatives. Instead of Mortify, you can use Alto as he can provide arrow damage deepen. Yang Yang is a decent alternative if you don't have enough energy region on Jian and for grouping. Jiangxin is a good defensive option along with crowd control. And instead of Verena, Bai Ji is a decent alternative as she can also provide various buffs. Even though Alto's arrow damage bonus is a very strong buff. Even though Alto's arrow damage bonus is a very strong buff. You cannot use him along with Mortify as your second buffer. As he only buffs the next character you switch into. Just like Mortify's outrow and the buff ends after the character switches out. Yang Yang can be used along with Mortify. You can do something like switch to Jian after Yang Yang, then go back to Mortify and activate his buffs. However, this team will have survivability issue as there's no sustained character. Here are some Jian's team examples. Jian, Mortify, Verena should be his current best team. Jian, Alto, Verena. Jian, Yang Yang, Baiji. Jian, Mortify, Jinxin. Now with all the basics out of the way, let's move on to Jian's rotation. Just a small reminder, it would really help my channel a lot if you could like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. Before the team rotation, let me first explain Jian's combo. The one thing I love about Jian is that he is very simple to play. Okay, sorry, I am lying. I love everything about him. Back to his combo. You first start with his intro skill, 
then activate his echo skill. I will talk about the echo cancel in a bit. Then use his resonance liberation. Then use his resonance skill. Spam basic attacks when the resonance skill is back up. Use it again and spam basic attacks until the end. When the burst ends, you go back to your supports to refresh the buffs. But wait, hold on. If you want to squeeze more damage out of him, there's a trick. After using his ultimate, look at his 4-day circuit bar. It is a timer for his liberation state duration. So what you can do is, after using your liberation, you will do the first skill cast. Then keep spamming his attacks till the duration is almost over. When the duration is about to end, that's when you use his second skill cast. This way you will be able to get a few more hits. Now for his team rotation. I will be using the Giant, Mortify, Verena team as an example. I have a complete guide for Mortify and Verena. You can check it out after this video. The link will be there in description. Mortify is using the Impermanence Heron and Moonlit Cloud set. Verena is using the Bellborn Echo and Rejuvenating Glow set. So I start with Verena's Resonance skill and a heavy attack. This will fill her Conchero bar by half and her skill will be in a 12 seconds cooldown. Then I switch to Mortify. Use his skill and some basic attacks to fill his concerto energy bar. Make sure not to fill his concerto bar completely to ensure a smooth rotation. If his 4-day circuit bar is filled, you can use his skill again before swapping him out. You can switch to Gian to use his skill once and to make sure his burst gets ready on time before going back to Verena. You can use her ultimate if it is ready or just skip to using resonance skill and heavy attack. Then use the echo skill. Before switching out, if the ultimate gets filled, you can use it, but it can be skipped if you don't need the healing. Then I swap directly to Jian. Immediately use his echo skill and swap cancel it with Mortify. Use Mortify's echo skill and burst. Fill his concerto bar and swap back to Jian and do his combo. Now our Jian is completely fed and can annihilate anything. This should be the best rotation for this team. But if you need a simpler rotation or if you are using the Mech Abomination echo skill, Follow the same initial rotation than when Verena's Concerto Bar is filled. You can swap to Mortify, use his Echo and Burst. Fill his Concerto and go to Jian. Here you won't be able to swap cancel his Monkey Echo skill, but it can work. Now moving on to his sequences or resonance chains, I will quickly go over them. All his sequences except the first one are decent to really strong upgrades. Unless you are going for his third advancement or higher, don't pull for his dupes. Instead, pull the weapon, it is much more worth it. The first one is totally not worth it. It just lets you cast his resonance skill once more and reduces the resolve consumption of this skill by 15. Don't spend your asteroids for this. The second sequence gives him some attack boost, which is like only 10% increase. His most noteworthy sequences are the third, fourth, and fifth one. The third one increases his crit rate by 16% and crit damage by 32% after casting his intro skill, resonance liberation or resonance skill. You can basically have permanent uptime on this. This is around 38% damage increase over his S0 or S1. His fourth sequence gives team-wide 25% heavy attack damage bonus for 30 seconds after casting his resonance liberation. This is a decent upgrade. The fifth sequence increases the damage multiplier of his outrow skill by 120% and gives him an attack boost of up to 45%, which can be gained by just performing his intro skill. So yeah, a big upgrade. And the last constellation is obviously his best one. Jian gains momentum stacks after casting a heavy attack, intro skill, or resonance skill. These stacks will be consumed to increase the multiplier of his forte circuit by 120%. For F2P or low spenders, just stick with S0 Jian, as he is already strong without any advancements. You can pull the weapon as it is a very strong weapon and can be used on other characters as well. So the weapon is a nice investment. Let me know in the comments which character build guide should I make next. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe for more Wuthering Waves content. Thanks for watching.